Check this out. Scrolling through the video at light speed. Try doing that without proxies, I dare you. I double dare you. First things first, drag your video files into your project if they aren't in there yet. I will go ahead and create a sequence based on these. And I will wait until the peak files are generated for both of these files, just so there are no interferences from any side. So we can focus on the proxy files. And then I just select the files I want to create proxies for, either using Ctrl or Shift, you know, holding it down while selecting the files. And then I right-click it, select Proxy, and select Create Proxies. I definitely prefer the proxy files to be next to original media in Proxy folder, as opposed to the default cache folder. And I actually don't know which of these settings are the best. I just use QuickTime and ProRes Low Resolution Proxy. I would definitely suggest either of the low resolution ones. I guess I will make another video where I compare the different formats in the future. Link in the description if future has come yet. Confirming that window starts media encoder, and then they actually start encoding. This footage is approximately 49 minutes of 1080p or full HD, 60 frames per second gaming, recorded in OBS at 25 or 30 CQP, which resulted in an average bitrate of about 100 Mbps. Stalker has a lot of film grain, which means that there are a lot of random pixels, which is horrible for encoding. It is the game that finally made me realize that I can't get away with recording lower range variable bitrates anymore, and because high bitrate H.264 videos lag extremely in Premiere Pro, I had to swallow the bitter pill of finally having to start using proxies for real. There's just no getting away without transcoding unless waiting for 2 or 12 seconds after moving your playhead is not a problem for you. Very nice, just gonna get rid of the unused audio tracks. And uh, this is what happens when you jump around. Just look at the speed of me scrolling through the timeline, it's incredible because it's already the proxy, because I didn't change the setting I had before. So now you have to go to press this plus and drag the toggle proxies icon over here. Press OK. And if you want it in source view as well. Yep, it's already enabled. So press this plus and drag the pro toggle proxies icon over here. And it's blue, so it's turned on. If I turn it off here in source view and then maybe in program view. Oh, it's also OK. I didn't know that they affect each other. Cool to know. But now that's, that it's off, check out this out. I can't believe how, how freaking forever this takes. Right, so yeah, this is endlessly painful to scroll around because I recorded it high quality. Oh, this is getting faster over time, okay. I think it depends on how far you click after a keyframe, but you cannot just scroll through the timeline. So as soon as you turn it on, toggle proxies, then you can just freaking fly fly like a bird through the timeline. And if you go full screen, I use the key left of number one for doing that. It's maximize frame. So you click over here and then maximize frame, right? We you can see the quality is way low. Even if you go to full quality, it's just very well pixelated or compressed and it's good. It's what you want it to be. Now let's see what happens if you render, because you might be thinking, uh, so do I have to remember to turn it off before I render? Like, will it render the proxy quality? So we're just gonna render five seconds. All right, let's do that. And the answer is no, it will not. You can see there is a checkbox here which says use proxies. So let's export this. And let's do that again, but enable use proxies. This was actually nearly twice as fast. Nice. Oh, by the way, the proxies of A and B, the files, are now in here in the same folder where these are, the source files, 37 gigabytes, but in a proxies subfolder. And I didn't realize they would be this large, actually. They are together 14.3 gigabytes, approximately half of the source files. As for the rendered files, no size difference, really. And here's the render where I had proxies enabled in Premiere, but I rendered without the checkbox use proxies. And it's bad quality because simply I used very low bitrate. But after a while you can see high detail in the video. And if we look at this, it's blurry all the way. So this is actually with proxies, rendered with proxies. And this one by default renders without proxies, even though use proxies, I mean toggle proxies was enabled. So this is how you deal with footage. So you can actually scroll through it. Use proxies. I know. I hate having to do it, but it makes your life so much easier. Have fun editing, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!